clear prop. And welcome back to Tip of the Week. This week's tip is going to look at a new technology that is fast becoming popular in experimental aircraft, heads up display. We'll try to answer the question why you should be interested in heads up and how you can install one in your experimental aircraft if you dare. A brief look at the historical development of heads up displays through the ages will help us appreciate this technology. Keep in mind that this is a rapidly developing technology and even one year from now products will have changed dramatically and hopefully more options will be available for less money. So if any information I provide now seems out of date when you watch this video, it means progress is marching on. First, let's define what is meant by heads up display. Heads up display is any transparent display that presents data without requiring users to look away from their usual viewpoints. Although they were initially developed for military aviation, heads-up displays are now used in commercial aircraft and automobiles. The first heads-up display development started in the 1940s for aiding fighters with weapon aiming. Later, they were used for improving general piloting of the aircraft. In the 1970s, heads-up display expanded beyond military aircraft and was introduced to commercial aviation. And then in 1988, heads-up display was installed on the Oldsmobile Cutlass Supreme and today is an option on lots of new cars. Now, you can install a heads-up display in your experimental aircraft. Let's see how that can be done. A typical heads-up display contains three primary components, a projector unit, a combiner, and a computer for generating the video image. The projector and combiner work together to form the image that will appear on your windshield. As these two devices improve and get more sophisticated, the projected image will become sharper and easier to see. The computer used to create images for projection requires custom software to convert flight data into the symbols we can recognize. In other words, airspeed, altitude, air traffic, maybe glide scope and artificial horizon all might be included in the projected display. Why should any pilot consider using heads-up display in their aircraft? In a single word, safety. If you recall your instructor admonishing you to keep your eyes looking out the window and not on the panel, you understand the challenge of wanting up-to-date airspeed and altitude information without having to continually refocus your eyesight and attention between the panel and the windshield. The heads-up display allows you to spend the majority of your time looking out the windshield and still have the information you want at the very same time. There are two ways to get one of these heads-up display systems in your experimental aircraft. Either purchase one ready to go from a vendor or roll your own. That's right, you can build your own system if you know what you're doing. There are some pretty smart and talented builders out there that have done just that. They built their own heads-up display systems for their aircraft. Let's listen and try to learn something from John Marzulli who built a Zenith 701 and recently made a trip from the state of Washington all the way to Air Venture in Wisconsin. He's going to describe his homebrew heads-up display, which provided him with ADSB air traffic information without his eyes leaving the windshield. 
Now that is important if you're flying into the busiest airport in the world during air venture. Blue means that the plane is in, on the ground. Red means that it's in the air. And then you have the yellow information cards that give you um, the bearing, distance, tail number, and relative height of the aircraft. Now, is that your custom software for the display? This is all custom software. I wrote all the, the software myself. But it's pulling from, it's pulling the data from the Stratix wires, uh, wirelessly. Heading to uh, AHARS, and then there's the AHARS moving around. This magic box here is actually uh, a Raspberry Pi with a massive heat sink. And what this is doing is it's pulling uh, all the data from the Stratix wires, wirelessly, and then it's performing all the computation and drawing all the graphics, sending it out over this HDMI port directly into the projector. So this is just a software middleman that can take the data from pretty much any ADSB receiver that implements the, the standard protocol, so you can use a Garmin GDL90, you can use a Stratus 2S, the new Stratus 3, a Stratux, um, probably the, the uh, dual uh, receiver would also probably work with this. Um, so it really doesn't care as long as you just connect it to the Wi-Fi network of the ADSB receiver and it gets all the data it's expecting. And then, and then it doesn't care about the projector, it just outputs it over HDMI, so you could hook it up to the Hudley projector, which is the automotive off the shelf. Um, you could hook it up to a Kivik, uh, which is another uh, projector. You could use the Eagle Optics 2.0 with an HDMI input, which is uh, a $2,000 projector. Or you could even put it um, on a little LCD screen if you wanted. And all the source code and everything to run uh, for the software is available free on online. Um, and the plans, the instructions, and everything how to build it. Uh, all, all in. And who's um, the author of all of that? Uh, I, I wrote all the software. You wrote, okay, and you're making that available to other people yep, too. Yeah, it's been available since July. Okay. Um, and it's all free, open source. So all you need to do is buy this. You buy this guy straight from the manufacturer. Um, it cost me two hundred ten dollars on Father's Day sale. Um, the Raspberry Pi is a thirty-five dollar computer that you can buy on Amazon. The, uh, the case you also buy on Amazon, um, that was $35, and then you would need a Stratix or a Stratus. Um, that particular Stratix cost $150 to build before the battery. So all in, we're talking about $450 ground up from nothing to get a HUD in your... And, what, and describe this lens here. So this is called a combiner, and basically it's a curved piece of uh, teleprompter glass that is taking the image from the projector and then allowing it to focus while still being able to see through it. And this piece of glass comes with the projector. It, it's, all a, it's all a unit. Now that is an example of what experimental aviation is all about. Bright people creating stuff to further enhance our progress and safety in sport aviation and then sharing it so that others can duplicate their accomplishments. Now, if you're not ready to start assembling discrete components like John showed, there are a few manufacturers that have off-the-shelf solutions for a heads-up display. They are rather few and far between right now, but as time marches on, there will be a lot more. With increasing functionality and options, for what gets displayed on the projection and at a lower cost. So for my final thoughts on the matter, time, time is on our side. There will be more vendors, more features, lower costs for this wonderful technology that is really going to improve our flying. And thanks to people like John Marzulli who pioneer the technology behind all this stuff because I don't have a clue how all of that electronics works inside of those computers and the software and whatnot. So there you have it, a brief introduction to heads-up display for experimental aircraft. 
It'll be your job to keep up to date with the latest products available in this field by keeping your eye on announcements and advertisements by our well-known avionics vendors. And who knows, maybe one of those vendors will send me a unit for evaluation and demonstration that I can share with you. While we're waiting for that to happen, let's all get back to building.